both of these generations of the M3, you can find them for under 50 grand. So should you get one? That's what we're here to find out. Talk about a car that clears your head. This one clears your sinuses. If you want to know what power steering should feel like, you should drive this M3. I'm now in the current generation of the BMW M3, the E90 series. This happens to actually be an E90 because this is the four-door. There's been four generations of the M3 in this country. Only two of those generations have gotten four doors. This one, and two generations ago, the E36. This particular flavor is about 64 grand. It's very expensive, but you can find them for about 37 to 40 in great shape. That's remarkably cheap for this much technology. Between the E46 and this E90 sedan, it's not just a generation gap. It feels like a Grand Canyon between the two cars. This is one of those rare cars where you can say, honey, I can take the kids in it. It's a normal, practical vehicle. But if you have a canyon road or a long stretch of tarmac, you can fly. You can be a child. There's so much to love about this car. The main one being the engine. Now this is a bit heavier car than the other M3, about 400 pounds, but this has the big snarling V8. And in the same way as the previous generation, it just pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls to redline and you keep thinking it can't pull any harder and then it does. At 4,000 RPM, it really starts to sound like a true muscle car. At 6,000 RPM, that ripping sound you hear is the fabric of the time-space continuum. There won't be another V8, and that's because this car sucks up gasoline like an addict snorts coke. I feel like I'm shoveling wheelbarrows full of gasoline at this car, but I guess once you're doing this, you don't really care, do you? It may be bigger and heavier than the last generation, but it's every bit as fast as your system. And this gearbox actually really rewards you. It is everything that the SMG gearbox isn't. Quick, crisp, easy to anticipate, but you can actually leave an automatic mode and it's better than we are. On your drive logic button, just beneath your gear selector, in the E46, that's really just a pain meter. On this car, you can have it all the way up to five, and the shifts are gonna be crisp, but it's not gonna break your neck. For sheer driver fun, Yes, the six-speed would be a blast, but if you're looking for track times or a commute that's easy to do and the occasional blast on a canyon, this gearbox is quite amazing. I gotta be honest with you. As soon as I saw this car, I fell in love. Look at the brakes. Look at the power bulge on the hood. Look at the stance. Now, Todd hates the power dome on the hood. It looks like a pimple to me. It looks like a mistake. I think it's fantastic. It's part of this aggressive styling. Now the entire car is not one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen in my life, but what I really have started to appreciate are the twisting surfaces from the top of the headlight as it wraps all the way to the base of the A-pillar. You'll also notice a twisting surface as it goes from the rear three-quarter and wraps around to the trunk. It's really quite beautiful. I would actually prefer the four-door to the coupe because of proportion. The four doors balance everything a little bit better. And take a look at how great this interior is. It feels sporty, it's beautiful materials. Again, the interior is pretty stable and they wanna get away with the fact that, okay, we make cars for drivers so our cars don't look that pretty inside. That's a poor excuse. A Lotus Elise, that gets away with the driver's car interior. A luxury German sedan just can't. It's clean though, and I actually like it better without the nav screen because it does this double hump thing that I don't like. It's such a high quality car and it feels like the nearly 70 grand you're gonna be paying brand new. Of course, BMW is continuing to rule the world of seats. These seats are even better than the last generation. You can change how wide the seat bolsters are, how hard they are, and where the lumbar is. These seats are brilliant. And I can tell the minute I sit down, 
Everything about this generation is bigger, louder, and angrier than the last. In fact, it feels a little bit larger behind the wheel. I don't feel the road as well in this car as I do in the previous generation, but it's very confidence-inspiring. I find myself just astounded by how easy this car is to drive incredibly fast. With a full slate of cars available to journalists, many of my fastest track times are still in the M3. All you have to do is push the M button on your steering wheel. It changes the engine power, it changes your shift points, it stiffens the suspension, and it makes the steering rack even tighter. It really makes your car pissed off. This is like having a house cat that's a Bengal tiger. You'll get used to it. You'll forget that it is just as crazy and exotic as it really is. When you have those rare moments to expose somebody else to this car, it's like suddenly opening the door for the FedEx guy and he sees, oh my God, you own a tiger. I can see why BMW makes you pay a premium for this car. It sucks, but just bite the bullet because you're going to be happy. Now the thing about buying a used one of these is yes, you can save yourself a good amount of money, but remember you're buying yourself a car that was almost $70,000 new, and that means that when it breaks, it's going to cost what it would to fix a $70,000 car. There are faster cars, and there are more purposeful cars. They're more purpose-built. But this is such a great all-around car. I want this thing. I want it. I would buy it in a heartbeat. If you're looking for a classy, luxurious family car that you also can just trash when you've got extra money for gas and tires, you can't beat the M3, honestly. Nothing else is this classy and also this amazing to drive. All right, so M3s, are you recommending people buy these two? I think we are. Okay. The E46 is a great car. I liked it, yeah. but it was just a car to me. There's a lot of good cars. I like the E46 a lot, but it stopped getting, being made in 06. This came out in 08, and to me, it's like 10 years past. I love this car. The more I drive this, the better this gets. If somebody's got 40 grand, you buy this one. If you've got 20 grand, you can't afford one of these, so you get the E46, and you still end up with a great car. You do, but I think even if you don't have the money, friends, family, fools, anybody, take out a bigger loan, go into debt. So you now have viewers living in tents and driving this car. Go to REI, buy a tent, buy this car. <laughs> it's that good. That's fantastic living advice, especially in a recession. Well done. <laughs>